Hi, my name is Jim McVeigh. I'm a prototyping architect at AWS. And in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is for application developers to use Backstage IO to create a containerized microservice application with a shared file system that runs in the AWS cloud. What you'll see in this demo is made possible by an AWS open source project known as Application Development for Backstage IO on AWS. The purpose of this video is to show you the developer experience. Subsequent videos will dive deeper into the architecture and other aspects of the open source project. The, the application development for Backstage IO on AWS Solution is targeted at application developers as the primary user with the goal of simplifying application development and deployment for AWS on the Backstage developer platform. To help developers get started rapidly, the solution provides application templates for quick starts Git repositories for source code management, automated builds and deploys, as well as quick access to troubleshooting capabilities such as application logs. For this demo, we're going to pretend that we're a developer tasked with creating a microservice application. The app will read and write data from a file system, and this application must scale and ensure that all instances of the application are reading from the same file system content. Let's jump into our demo and see how easy it is to get started building through app development for Backstage IO on AWS. When I log into Backstage IO, I'm taken to the home screen. What I want to get done for today is to create a new application. So I'm going to go to the Create section in the left navigation, where I can see a variety of application templates that allow me to get started quickly. I'm going to begin with the Node.js microservice with EFS starter template. This is going to allow me to create a sample journal application which persists entries to an AWS EFS file system. When I choose this template, I'm going to be taken to walk through a wizard to provide basic information about the application itself. So let's give this a name, a description, and specify who I want to be the owner of this application. I want to deploy this to AWS so I can select from a variety of environments that have been pre-configured into my Backstage instance. Today I want to deploy to a development environment with public access. I'm also going to provide information about the file system. So I'm just going to give it a simple name. This is a file system for journals. so. And the last step is going to prompt me to choose a Git repository location. I'm just going to give it the same name as my application. Finally, I'm presented with a summary of all of the input that I've provided. And if that looks good, I'm going to click the Create button. From here, I'm taken to a view that allows me to see a list of tasks that are automatically taken by the starter application template that I've chosen. For this particular template, it's going th through the process of creating a shared file system resource in AWS. It will deploy the application to an elastic container service in AWS. It goes through the process of creating a secret to hold credentials, fetches the base skeleton template for the application, and performs a variety of updates into the templated source code, publishes it to a Git repository, create a repository access token, register the component in Backstage, and finally, register the file system as a resource in Backstage. While the task is running, I can easily see progress and details for each of the individual steps. Now that our task is completed, we can see that we have a Git repository that we can quickly access that's been created for us, populated with all of the starter code. We've also had an application component registered in the Backstage catalog, as well as a resource for EFS. So let's take a look at what that looks like. In the AWS software catalog, I can see that we've now got an A journal demo application. Also in the catalog, I can switch to view resource kinds, which are going to show me the journal that I've created. Let's look at the journal demo application. On the default page, we can see an overview, 
of the application, again with quick access to the source code. We can see relationships for the journal between being owned by developers, related to and having a dependency on the EFS journal that was created, as well as a dependency on that public development environment. Scrolling down, I can see that there's more information about the application. It's currently not running, so let's start the application. While that's loading, I'll scroll a little bit more, we can see that we have quick access to a lot of the AWS infrastructure resources that were created on our behalf, including access to secrets, logs, and EFS file system resource information. The application is still starting, activating, and running. Now that the application is running, let's copy our endpoint. And I'm going to switch over to an API client. Here, I want to be able to test the application. So I'm going to paste the base URL in. And I'm going to run a quick health check. Here I can see that I'm hitting one of our containers. I see the host name for it. And I see some basic health information about it. So let's see what journals we've got. I get back an empty array, so we don't have any. Let's create a new journal. I'm going to create my journal and call it Greg. So file Greg has been created successfully. And let's see, perform a git against the journal for Greg. And we can see that it's been pre-populated with some standard header information. If I want to start adding some new content, I'm going to send that content as part of the body in a put to that journal. Greg has been updated successfully. And if we go back and look at the journal content again, we can see that we've updated the, the information for this journal. And it's been updated on the underlying file system. Now let's stop the task. And once it's stopped, we can start it back up again. With the task running again, we'll flip back over to our client. And if we do a listing of journals, we should expect to see Greg is still there. And Greg still has the same journal content. If we look at the health information, we can see that this is actually a completely different container running as we have a new host name, as represented by its own internal IP address. In addition to being able to manage the application to start, stop it, and see some detailed information about it, we also can view the CI-CD pipeline that has been created on our behalf. For troubleshooting purposes, we can take a look at our logs, and we can see detailed information that helps us do some quick troubleshooting. So we started with a goal of building a scalable microservice using a shared file system. Through the use of the application development for Backstage I.O. on AWS Solution, I was able to quickly select a starting template, deploy to AWS, and I now have a working application running in an Elastic Container Service cluster, fronted by an application load balancer, and writing to a shared EFS file system. A source control repository was created for me, and my new components are registered in Backstage, where I can now manage the application, and others on my team can discover the app and AWS resources. Thank you for watching this video on how application development for Backstage I.O. on AWS allows developers to easily create a scalable, containerized microservice with a shared file system.